Have you ever heard the phrase networking and thought, man, it's this really, really hardcore, like stuffy thing that I have to go to or do or be a part of on this episode, we're going to blow your mind. And I, I promise you only about half of you are going to fully understand and implement what is taught today, but we're going to go to the highest levels of what it really means to connect and network. And so you're going to hear that today on this episode of word of mouth. Get ready to improve your mindset, increase your skill set, and expand your network. Follow along as the CEO of Master Networks brings you over a decade of business networking experience. Welcome to Word of Mouth with Chaz Wilson. You know, in some of the previous episodes, we've talked about inflation and and supply demand chains and all the challenges that's presenting in businesses and we we did hear from some of the people about what the power of a network and how that supported them through that process i couldn't think of anyone better to bring on this episode who has not only teaches people a lot like we do about growing their network but who's literally done this at such a high level so welcome today on this episode of word of mouth and welcome ken walls Ken, welcome. welcome to the episode hey thank you for having me i'm grateful to be here Ken, you spoke at our national convention called Connect, and you shared so much wisdom with that. And, and you know, so many of our people said it was one of the best presentations they've ever heard. And I think if I can be just my opinion of that, why people said that was because you took something that many people overcomplicate and you you made it simple enough that everyone in the audience could go, I could do that. So if you wouldn't mind, would you take us through a little bit of what you do to build what you've done to build your network? I mean, you, you are so connected with people. Like, I think you said to me one time, you kind of have to pinch yourself. Like, is this real? Like the number of people you're connected with, right? Walk us, our audience through that a little bit. Well, well, I, you know, I look at it sometimes and I think, am I, am I really? And, and then I'm like, you know, um, I recently heard Russell Brunson talk about how he could sell his $600 iPhone for, I think he said $10,000 or, or a hundred thousand dollars. And, and, and then he, and I was like, that's insane. Nobody's going to give you a hundred thousand dollars for your iPhone. And then he started talking about all the apps that are on it and all of the contacts and how everybody in his contacts will answer the phone if you call and at least give you, you know, and I thought, Oh yeah, I could sell my phone then for, for that as well. So, yeah, uh, you know, I look at this Chaz and I think, I think, man, back in 2014, I, I mean, I had contacts, I had friends, um, but not on the level I have now. And, and so, you know, for me, it's, it's about, I always think, what can I do to help this person further their cause make make their dreams more of a reality you know i I, that's that's kind of what it is for me when i connect with somebody new yeah there's a level of so there's something that i teach in the bond process of networking bond is the acronym we use for how we connect with others and it's b-o-n-d and we we get to d it's develop an opportunity and i think i just want to point out something that that ken brought up Develop an opportunity doesn't always mean, so if you and I are having a face-to-face, we've connected and we go through the bond method, Katie, I think most people misunderstand. They go, develop an opportunity only means you and I. Right. But it doesn't just mean you and I. What it means is, what if Ken is the connection you need? And I go, I know Ken and Ken, let me connect you with him. You still see me as a valuable asset. You made that connection. And so we are on a different level now. Right. And Ken, that's what I believe you, you are at a mastery level of that concept. And that's really where I wanted to dig in today to what you just said. And you went right at it because so many people miss that. They're always looking for what am I going to get out of this today versus, man, if I could help you connect with somebody, you're totally going to see me as, and you've done that, right? You know, there, yeah, I just had, um, and, and this is not, please don't think I'm bragging cause I'm not, I'm, this is, I'm so humbled and honored to be where I am. 
Um, you know, I had Judge Ken Starr, who served on Ronald Reagan's administration. He served on um, President H.W. Bush's administration. Um, he impeached Bill Clinton. He's like, he's really, really well known, right? He's an, an American icon. And I've got this guy's <laughs> cell phone number now. And, and I just had a private book signing event with him here in Columbus, Ohio, where there were, you know, my, my good friend, a state senator, and all these dignitaries were at this event. And I, I was standing in this, the, the, the courtyard garden, whatever you call it, of this $3 million plus home and uh, where we hosted the event. And I'm looking around, the mayor of the city is there, all these just dignitaries. And I'm looking around thinking, how did I get here? Like, this is unbelievable to me. Like, I cannot believe that I'm here and Ken Starr is giving a speech and edifying the crap out of me. And I've done nothing for him except for have him on a couple of live streams and help him promote his new book. And, and I think that that's what most people miss in the connection process is they, you know, look, I've got a mortgage, I have car payments, I have, you know, yeah. I have bills that need to be paid. And, and I have moments in, in life where cash flow gets tight in my business and in my life. And, and, and so I understand the need to um, survive. I get that, right? Most people get into that place and they, they look at every single person they meet as what's in it for me. Right. And as hard as it is, and it is difficult, especially when you got to feed your babies, it's difficult to, to meet somebody new and think, what can I do for them? It's very, very tough. But if you can have that shift, man, magic is created. I, I, I feel like if, if we never shot another episode of this podcast, if people just understood this, what you're talking about right here, it would not just like double their business. And it's not just always about business too, right? Cause like, I, I feel like over this time you and I have become great friends and we've now interacted with people that either you've referred to me or I've referred to you that have become friends of all of ours, et cetera. So it's not just business. I want to be clear about that. But if people in the business context, if people really understood what Ken was saying and, and like about half the people will get it and about half won't, those that get what he's talking about and really are, it's a mindset shift. It is, you can't fake this. This has to be a mindset core value shift. If you do that, man, it is not double business. It's 10, 20, 40, a hundred times your business growth, right? Would you agree with that? 1000%. It's, it's, it's hard. It's, it's very difficult because it's counterintuitive to, you know, I'm friends with Grant Cardone and, right. and I have both of his cell phone numbers, not just one of them. You mean he didn't, he didn't get the second cell phone number just because you had his first one. He's like, I got to get rid of this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I've never, I've called him once. So yeah, we right. FaceTimed a few times, but, but so, you know, I, I, because I won't abuse that. I, I don't right. abuse that. And there are people, I had a guy and I hate to bring this up. It's a negative and I hate negativity, but, but this guy, I don't even know this guy. He's never done. He didn't, he has not joined my Academy. He's never promoted me. He's never done anything for me. And he sends me a private message on Facebook asking me for $200 the other night. And I'm like, bro, welcome to the block party. You just got blocked. So, <laughs> you know, yeah, but that's what I'm talking about. I get it. I've been to, I've watched my cars get towed. I've lost houses. I've, I've been through it, owning a business or, or, and, or being in sales and trying to make your way in this world is very, very difficult. I understand yeah. that, but you've got to have the shift at, you will have the shift. One yes. of these days you will have the shift. It might be when you're laying on your deathbed at 90 years old, but there will be a moment in time for every single person on this planet where you realize, oh my, this whole world isn't about me. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. 
So the sooner you can realize that and start start moving towards how can I serve my fellow man and woman? How can I make their lives better? Once you, Zig Ziglar said it best. If right. you can have anything you want in life, if you'll just help enough other people get what they want. Yep. Uh, I, I still think back to the day. So uh, just let's, let's play this out. If can you, will you play this kind of out with me here? Like let's tell everyone kind of how this worked with you and I. So here's, what's fascinating. I, I love telling this story. So, so a member of Master Networks says, hey, I've got somebody you need to connect with, right? And so Kathy says, I, I got this guy you need to connect with. So she connects me with, with Ken. Ken and I get on a phone call and we start talking. And, and he tells me his name and I'm like, you just, one of those things, I'm like, I swear I've talked to this guy before. <laughs> no, literally, we live across the country. We're not even in the same state. We live across the country. Have you heard this? By the way? Mm -mm. No, okay, I haven't so, heard it. So we're, we're, I'm talking to Ken on the phone. He tells me his name. We're talking like, I swear I've talked to this guy. <laughs> this, this is just the strangest thing. But it's like you don't want to say it because. No, I think I did say it. I'm like, have we ever met before? I feel like we've spoken before. And I get on my email and I, I, I search his name. I kid you not. It probably was like two years before. Yeah. He worked at a different company in sales. And he was the sales rep that I had <laughs> talked to at this different company. Yeah. Two years prior. Like that's how the world was like, you two need to get connected. So uh, long story short, Ken and I start talking to each other. I, we just started talking and he sends me a text and says, Hey, have you ever heard of chicken soup for the soul? I'm like, yeah. He's like the author, Mark Victor Hansen. Would you like to chat with him? I think he'd be great speaking at your event. I'm like, what? Sure. Yeah. Awesome. Well, and he had just met Mark. Like it wasn't like he knew he Mark. He was not like best friends. <laughs> right. We are now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. So anyway, he makes that connection. Well, then Ken speaks at our event connect and there's a gentleman there who I'm friends with Robbie. And I put those two together in the, in the lobby, Robbie in the lobby. And he, he met, he met Robbie and you guys have formed a relationship as well and a friendship and business opportunities and so on. So I just wanted people to go to know this isn't something you and I just talk about. This is something that we both do at a really high level. So it's as simple as just communicating with people or it I mean, should be. It's pretty much as it, you know what it is. I think it's as simple as going to what Ken just said. It's like, what do you really need? And it's not, how can I help you? It's who do I know that could help you? That's, I think, the question internally that's different. How do you get to that mind shift to where you're in a place where you're doing that? That's a really good question. Yeah, Ken, how do you get to a place where, like, because were you always wired that way to go, how can I help? Or was there a shift as you talked about it for you? No, I, um, I'm very transparent about this. I, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm a recovered alcoholic and I celebrated 19 years sober That's yesterday. Awesome. Yeah. Congratulations. Thanks. But I, you know, there was a, there was a time when, um, in my, my twenties and, and early thirties, I literally thought the world revolved around me. Like you were lucky to be in my world and you need to let me know about how lucky you feel. <laughs> right. Right. That's how I was. And, and so, um, I was brought to, I, and I had a conversation with a, a high level CEO doing a lot, big, big, big numbers yesterday or last night. Um, that reached out to me and said, Hey, congratulations on your sobriety. That's the one thing I really wish I could remove from my life. And wow. And so, right. So, which happens often I get, because I'm so transparent about it, you know, people who are struggling, um, reach out to me and, and it's one of the gifts and, and I'm grateful for it. But so, you know, he said, what did it take? What was the magic switch for you? And I'm like, um, I had to be humbled. A, a, a great, great quote, a, a friend of mine, a client, a dentist friend, a client of mine that he has this quote hanging on his wall in his office. And I'll never forget this. And it is, you're either living a life of humility or you're headed for one. Yep. And, and to me that, you know, and of course at the time I was cocky, I was what, you know, like, whatever dude you know but but now i get it like if you it, you know you've got I, for me it took being brought to my knees it really yeah. did and and losing everything and 
um, and realizing that I'm not the creator of the universe. There is a power greater than me that did that um, and, and gave me life as well and gave me a life to give to others. And, and again, that doesn't mean be a, some kind of Pollyanna pushover. I just, I live my life to help other people. And I know that even in the moments when I can't, when my cash flow is horrible or whatever, even in those moments, I, I'll give my last dime if I have to, to exercise or show that, hey, I have faith in this whole process, God. Um, like, you know, I've got yeah. faith here. So I'm going all in. I'm going all in on this. And, and if, for me, if you do that, um, th there's nothing you can't have or achieve in this life. But it, it, it takes, it takes a, a level of being humble. I think what it also reminds me is that everything – so first of all, I, I've said this quite often is that everything of significance in my life is because of a relationship, right? So everything I have that's significant, that means value, that is important to me is because of a relationship. So that being said, the answer typically to any challenge we have is not what but who. Anything you're struggling with in your business, if you're listening to this today, anything you're struggling with in your business, it's not a what, it's a who. Who do I know who's already been through it, who could help me? Or who do I know that might know somebody that can help me? I mean, we've, uh, you know, I, I, I could probably go back through my phone over the last two or three years, Ken, that, you know, there's been times where I've messaged you and said, hey, who do you know this? Or, you know, we're looking for a speaker at an event. Who do you think of? Or you've messaged and say, hey, do you know anybody that does this or whatever? And it's like, the reality is, is that network has supported us in our businesses and in our personal lives because of that. And that's why I value, I truly value Ken as a friend because I know, first of all, I trust anybody he's going to send to me, right? Uh, number two, I know that he's doing it out of full support to help me, not out of any benefit per se to him that that's going to come of that. And so if people really heard what Ken was saying today, I think it's going to absolutely change. I hope, and what you asked the question, I hope it doesn't take somebody getting to their knees though, but it might. Right. Well, I think it with relationships, there has to be that mutual trust because I know for some people it's hard to open up. Like you meet someone and you might want to ask them for help, but like what if they think you're being too needy or they're like, oh, here we go again. Someone is just asking for help. And so having that openness and transparency for being open yourself and willing to help is important to know in those new relationships. Yeah. You know, in my experience, I have felt like though, even first time meeting people, I'm okay to even ask for that help because, or, Hey, who do you know? In my experience, if they're really successful people who share that same kind of mindset, they'll tell me the first time we right. talk they're like, Oh, I know somebody you should talk with. And in fact, not only will they tell me they're excited to, because that's the type of person they are. If they are the type of person where they're like, well, what's in this for me, then they kind of hold that back. Well, I don't know if I can give you this name or I don't know if I can, you know, but they're just open to, Hey, let me connect you to this person and that person. Um, has that been your experience? Ken, I mean, you're talking about some big names that you've chatted with. Have you, have you been able to get them to refer people to you or connect you with others kind of like pretty quickly in that relationship? Yeah. I, you know, I'm sit, <clears throat> sitting here thinking about when I, um, wanted Grant Cardone as a client and I was already a client of his and I flew my assistant to, to Miami. Miami. Love that story, by the way. To Yeah, to deliver some a couple of bottles of wine to him and his wife. And um, I ended up getting a phone call that morning from Grant. And, and, and he says, um, this is the classiest thing anybody's ever done for me. I'm like, dude, <laughs> come on, man. There's no way. But you know, whatever. And 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 he was very, very real and authentic and and grateful. And he said, if there's ever anything I can do for you, let me know. And I said, Well, I, I want you as a client. He said, Well, what do you do? And I said, I build websites and do SEO stuff, man. I your SEO is horrible. And and he's like, I know, <laughs> I can you fix that? And, and, and he's like, I go, yeah, I can fix it. And so um, he became a client of mine. And, and he, you know, if you have somebody like Grant Cardone as a client, 
he doesn't have to refer anybody. All he has to do is say, I'm doing business with Chaz Wilson. And yep. suddenly 10 million people know Chaz, who Chaz Wilson is. Right. I, I literally picked up thousands and thousands and thousands of followers across social media um, because of that relationship. And I still do, you know, I just, it, but again, people, people, and I get the, I get the, I want to meet, I meet somebody and I want something from that person. I understand that I, and, and, but it has to be, it has to be reciprocal. And that's the part that people miss is what value are you bringing to the relationship first? First, you got to show up with the value first. So, I have an interesting thought and I hadn't thought of this till you just said that I saw a post by somebody recently and they were saying, so it was like a post and then it was like a reaction to it kind of thing. It might've even been a video. I don't remember, but I just remember the context was so many people teach, Hey, if you want to, you know, find a mentor, find somebody and then ask them out to lunch, you know, so they'll, they'll share everything. And, and his response was kind of different because I heard that growing up in business too. It's like, oh, go find, you know, if you want to know Ken Walls, call him up and see if you, know, you can buy him lunch and, and pick his brain. And this was fascinating. This guy was like, bull crap. He goes, he's like, no. He goes, a successful person, yes, they want to share, but they have to feel like there's value there. And so somebody who shows up with value first, then they're willing to share that. And he's like, you're missing the most important piece. Show up with a piece of value first. And I'm like, yes, that's always been what attracts me to spend time with somebody and, and that I know they're going to want to spend time with me if I'm trying to mentor up. Like it's kind of that you're mentoring up or mentoring down kind of thing. Uh, I'm looking for a mentor or I'm the mentor in that case. Like I look at it the same way. If somebody says, hey, can I just take you out to lunch? I'm like, Ugh. Like, I guess. <laughs> right. I guess. I guess. <laughs> right. No, yeah, I, I, I say no to that. Yeah. I, and the reason I say no is I don't have time. Now, if right. Chaz, Chaz hits me up, hey, bro, I'm in Columbus. I want to take you to lunch. Okay, let me see what day. And, you know, even in that instance, it might be difficult if I have, right. you know, a crazy schedule. If it's Grant, if it's, you know, I, I'm, I, you know, I'm canceling my plans to be with Chaz or Grant or whoever. But but if you're just the, a, a guy or a gal trying to, trying to make like I get these messages from Verizon people all the time and T-Mobile and AT&T and they're hey we want to earn your business and your companies and it's like what have you done for me lately have you ever yes. been on my social media and shared one of my posts right and not just one time but our, that's the part that people miss is if I want to get Chaz Wilson's attention and Chaz doesn't need my money. Like, what can I do to get his attention? Well, I could show up and like really pay attention to his social media, like or what well, love all of his posts, share his posts out, comment, tag other people on his posts, and make Chaz go. Because eventually, Chaz is going to recognize me. Eventually, Chaz is going to so be true. like. Who's this John Smith guy that keeps sharing my stuff and commenting? And, and I'm not talking about showing up on his Instagram page and, and liking 1,400 pictures in a row. That's creepy. Literally <laughs> happened Literally happened last night. Happened yeah. to me today, and I blocked the person. I blocked them. Yeah, and then they start messaging me like uh, this message uh, video, like as if it was legitimately for me. It was for everybody they sent it to. And it's like, hey, man, I can help you grow your Instagram following. And I'm like, you don't know me at all. Yeah. No, I mean, you know, look at it the same way that, and Larry and Taylor Thompson who spoke. Yes. Right. They're, they're clients of mine and dear friends of mine and they call it the Lamborghini bikini crowd. You know, you go over to Instagram and you've got 22 year old kids with, you know, sitting on a private jet or it that right. they rented for, for with their dad's credit card for a day. <laughs> Um, right. for photo ops only not to actually fly anywhere, you know, yeah. and you've got, and they're renting Lamborghinis and they're, and, 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 and they're trying to put out something that's just not real. Yep. You know, if it's not real, eventually it's going to collapse on yep. you and so true. it's going to hurt. So, you know, learn how to be authentic and real. I've been there. I'm, that, I'm not judging. I've been there. I have been there and bought the t-shirt and wore it out, but eventually it collapses on you. Do you know what the big takeaway was from there? 
I heard that Ken would maybe have lunch with me, but if Grant Cardone came, he'd, he can't, would, he'd clear his schedule. For, yeah. I, that's what I heard. So, I mean, <laughs> come on, dude. Do you blame me? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I wasn't going to bring it up. Say, hey, Grant, you know Chaz, it. don't you? <laughs> yeah, I could maybe make the time. No, I'm just, I love it, man. I, you know <laughs> I'd have lunch with you, dude. No, of course. Uh, <laughs> such value, though. I, I really hope everyone understood there that is the magic to networking that everyone misses. They think networking is even in master networks. It's, Oh, I paid a membership and I show up to a chapter meeting or I I'm part of the chamber and I show up to the mixers. That is not, that is, that is getting you in the proximity to network, but that is not networking. That is not connecting. Networking feels to most people like this forced activity. Well, Ken and I tried it. Ken does it. He's a master of it. And I'm trying to, I want to be like him when I grow up on this, but like, here's the key is like, it's just finding out what do they need? That, that takes listening. That takes paying attention. That takes all of those kinds of skill sets that he, so he has the mindset, the skill set, and he's built that network. That's why he'll be successful, is successful, and will continue to be successful at anything and everything he does because he's built that network to support it. Ken, I think, do we have a question of the day today for Ken? What have you learned about life from kids? Don't think, don't, don't take things too seriously. Don't think, take <laughs> things too seriously. Ken, what have you learned about life from kids? Wow. I immediately um, went to both of my daughters, of course. Um, what have I learned about life from kids? Stay one. Yeah. Definitely. That's great. I, you know, I've never grown up. I probably never will. Um, and and some people are okay with that, and other people aren't. You know, my my daughter Abigail, my 11 year old, when she was when she got out of the 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 minivan at in kindergarten, um, the the principal walked up and said, "Oh, hi, you must be Abby." And, and Abigail looked at the principal and said, it's Abigail. And she like, yeah, the principal's like, set her straight right away. Whoa. Uh, okay. Well, we, we, we won't let that happen again. And that's kind of her, you know, that's just who she is. And, yeah. and my, you know, my other daughter, it, it's, it's stay a kid. Yeah. They at least keep that that fun and happy, um, happy go lucky attitude towards life because, you know, this is the only one we get as far as I'm I know about. Yep. And I'm gonna I want to give it, I want to give it all I have and have fun along the way. Yes, sir. Uh, my mine I would just add it isn't so much the lesson of a uh, phrase that I because I always think of my five kids I've learned so many lessons from them and it's the idea that. And I, I talk about this in my trainings that you're never too old to learn and you're never too young to teach. Meaning I have, you know, it doesn't matter how old you are and how many lessons you think you've learned. You can learn something if you're open to it from a two-year-old, a three-year-old, a four-year-old. It does not matter. They can teach a lesson if you're open to hearing it. And I think I've learned a lot of lessons from kids. To your point, Ken, it's like some of the most important lessons I'm reminded because all of a sudden we become adults and there's all these rules that, you know, make us have to behave and act certain ways when the kids are the ones that really have it figured out, I think. So, yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I mean, you know, and ironically, they're trying to figure it out, but, you know, they, yeah. they already have it. Yep, they have it for sure. Ken, thanks for joining us on this episode of Word of Mouth, my friend. Thank you. Very valuable.